what's really easy, what's so good about the Genet, is that it's a really positive experience for everyone. Every candidate comes away better than they were when they got here. And I think that's fantastic. They work with their own teachers on 19th century and 20th century variations and then we coach them during the um, five days before the semi-finals when they're, they're here in London. They can work on technique, yes technique's very important, of course it is, it underpins everything, but music and performance is, is there as well, it's, it's all interrelated. What I try to bring out in them is their own interpretation, try and encourage them to really respond to the music, to really let their bodies sing the music. It's actually really interesting to have somebody different because we've had our teacher at school who sees us every day and knows what we're like. As soon as you get a new set of eyes watching you, they notice different things. It's always great to work with different coaches. They can bring out different qualities that perhaps you hadn't thought about or different technical aspects that maybe you thought of, thought of um, in a different way and the way that they tell you, it just maybe it'll click. I, I bring to it a very different eye, and as a choreographer as well, I can, I can see the shape of the 19th century solos. I see the format, and often I'm able to help them understand it better. Things that perhaps they feel are just, you know, there because they're difficult. They're not. They're there for a reason. They continue the choreographic line, and often find once I explain it to the candidates, they understand why, why they need to be performing these, these variations. You, you, you have nice phrasing, so make sure it phrases somewhere. The last one higher. The only thing I would say now that you've really cleaned up that coup de pied coming round, attitude, plié before pas de chance. Make... But when you do it, it looks really nice. So just do it. Don't, show, don't do the steps, really. Keep the same feeling, the same control. Keep that serenity. They also have the opportunity of being part of a creative process in having a variation created especially for them for the competition. I've created these pieces in the, in the studio so I didn't come with anything premeditated, I didn't set anything because I wanted to really work with the dancers. He doesn't come in and give you the steps. He, he looks at you and how it looks on you and if it doesn't work he'll, he'll change it to how it fits with you. Just lift your chin a little bit more, even though it's kind of, the focus is there, but the chin's down. Lift the chin. That, yes, that's it. And I think that was one of the things that Lynn Wallace was really keen on focusing about, is that they have an experience of working with a choreographer firsthand, and it's not just learning another solo from a video or from a person, it's incorporating them, using their ideas, using who, who they are. It all needs to be you. Yeah, I don't want to see an imposed solo. I don't want to see another fairy, fairy variation. This is you. I want to see who you are, and so does the panel. There's nothing more exciting than a dancer coming out, and by the time they finish a solo, thinking, wow, I really think I know who that person is. It just needs to have life. You need to connect with the people out here. They're going to see this solo 60 times, yeah? I'm about to start a marathon of watching this solo 60 times. So ours is quite a lyrical piece. Um, it's to a John Field nocturne. So it's a really beautiful kind of um, legato piece. So um, it's really smooth and he's got this really using different parts of the body, especially from like use of the back and the arms. He told us ourselves that we can give it our own interpretation and highlight the parts that we're good at. So there, there are all sorts of different movements he's put in and if you like sharp movements or ones where you lift your legs or turning ones, you have to show the audience that. Like Jodie's really good at getting her legs high, so no. <laughs> <laughs> so even these up to the back just needs to have a little slink to it. That's it, yes. All of it. Just work the pelvis a bit more. Everything, yes. So just think about tilting. So everything tilts back and forward and back and forward. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Makes so much difference. 
yeah because as soon as you start using this the whole body works because everything just ricochets after it yeah good no tension in the neck relax relax this year's candidates are really good there's a really high standard so it's going to be an exciting semi-final Today is the day of the second day of the semi-finals and today we're doing a variation from the 19th century and also the Liam Scarlet variation we've been working on all week. I think everyone's just trying to find their zoom at the moment, like get, get where they want to be mentally and physically with the warming up and stuff and I'm feeling okay and I'm just focusing in on what I have to do. I always vis try and visualise the solo once in my head to see it, how exactly I want to do it and then I try and repeat that physically when I'm actually I'm on stage. such a pleasure to watch all of those dancers on stage they're just extraordinary in every way and you know regardless of the outcome uh, they all go away enriched by the experience it's known as the friendly competition um, it has a, a lovely fairness about it generally for the students we bring we find a great deal of benefit from it because of what they have to encounter here when they come it, it doesn't matter whether you make the finals whether you win or not what matters what you take with you and what you do with that, because you have the future ahead of you. You're not finished today, you're starting today. It's been really fun just to have the week of training and to get to perform on the stage. So. Um, I think everybody's just really excited for the finalists and relieved it's over and, and everyone's really tired too. We have rehearsals tomorrow and then come back on Sunday <laughs> for the final. So. We look forward to seeing you all at the final of the Jeanne International Ballet Competition on Sunday at Sadler's Wells Theatre. My curiosity is to see who comes out tonight, because tonight's the kind of peacock number, you know, who all of a sudden uh, was a sleeper and just coasting to get in and now all of a sudden they're really going to show it. There are two different judges tonight. Uh, this evening we have Dame Monica Mason and Dame Antoinette Sibley. Monica Mason is the current um, director of the Royal Ballet. And then of course um, Dame Antoinette Sibley was one of the iconic dancers of the Royal Ballet.
so now the stage is set, and I will start with the male medal winners. Lachlan Monaghan. Horatio Di Bella. Candidate number seven, Sean Bates. Candidate number five, Tieni Head. Candidate number 12, Francesca Hayward. I'm feeling great. Just, oh my god, it's a great feeling. I don't know what to say really. Really, really proud of him. Go Rome Ballet! I love working with young people and um, just seeing them achieve. I got the impression from them um, that uh, you know they really did feel good about what they'd done. I thought tonight was wonderful. They'd been working with these wonderful teachers and each individual dancer brought something very special to it. Uh, it was interesting to see the kids doing uh, original choreography, gave the dancers a challenge, but also allowed uh, some, uh, some personal expression, which was very good. So you could see uh, each of the, of the performers gave it something different. And I'm very supportive of the, what they do, you know, trying to find and trying to keep standards of dancers uh, around the world to a level where they can find jobs in really good companies. And I spoke to some of the candidates immediately afterwards and you know, asked them how it went, and they all said they want to do it again. Sadists, why? But it's great that they've enjoyed it that much, that's great. Mm -hmm.